I'm not the guy that said I want to be a dictator on day one. I'm not the guy that refused to accept the outcome of the election. I'm not the guy who said that one accept the outcome of this election automatically. You can't only love your country when you win. All right, guys, KB32 here. Check it out. Uh, sitting over here in the Freedom Office. Haven't done a video from here in quite some time. I felt like it'd be a good opportunity to go ahead and do it. Besides, this is somewhat air conditioned. And if you live in the South, hell, even in the Northeast, you're, you're experiencing some severe heat. And I'm going to tell you something. You can always take clothes off, uh, but you can't necessarily lose 60 pounds in the next 30 minutes. <laughs> but anyway, um, all right, let's touch base on the assassination attempt. I, I've been watching a lot of this stuff, uh, talking about failures. Man, this was a, an incredible failure. Almost, a, it's negligence, in other words. It really is. And it's almost, if the guys who were saying stuff basically about, uh, you know, this is uh, was a conspiracy theory or whatever it was meant to happen, that kind of thing, you're not far off, man. It's almost, it's almost to that degree that you can think that that roof line, that rooftop was intentionally left open. And basically everybody said, don't mess with anybody getting on top of that thing. There's a lot of stories going on, like the Monday morning quarterback, I'm not going to do, okay? But if you... Tell me what you think down below. I know we talked about it before, but I'm going to tell you something, man. This is just absolutely incredible. All right, so the purpose of this video is we're talking about the the speech that uh, good old Biden did last night with Lester Holt, Lester Holt the hardest working man at NBC. Uh, and it was basically, here's the nut, Shet. Nut, the, here's the nut in, in, in the shell right here, okay? Uh, this guy's the biggest gaslighter you've ever seen in your entire life. Joe Biden is just incredible. Every time he was asked a question, he bounced it back or deferred it off and then turned it back into a Trump thing. Okay. And essentially, you know, bringing down the tone. Well, I sat there and watched people on the news last night talking. And if you really want to see what's going on in the world, how much these guys hate Trump right now is that watch MSNBC. They had a guy on there talking about how he's going to become a dictator. He's going to get rid of the voting. This is going to be the last time we've, I mean, just sheer lies and it's fear mongering. And if you fear monger enough, this shit, like what we saw on Saturday happened. So let's do this. I'm going to talk about this real quickly. Here we go. There's, there's no place at all for violence in politics in America. None. Zero. And uh, we've reached a point where it's, uh, it's become too commonplace, not assassinations, but to talk about it. For example, you know, the January 6th, uh, you know, the attack on the Capitol. The all right, let's stop it right there, the attack on the Capitol. So immediately what we're doing is we're turning the focus away from Donald Trump because this is the worst thing that's ever happened to Biden, actually, is that Donald Trump stood up like an American hero, heart of a lion, with his fist up. He said, stop, 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 hold on, let me go fight, and then his thing. That was incredible. Also, let's just bounce on the 30% uh, uh, female requirement now. Does that mean that the detail that surrounds him has to be consist of 30% of the females? In my mind, this is absolutely fucked up. I excuse my French. Let's listen to this next session. And basically what I did was I took some sound bites out of this whole thing because whereas he's wanting to bring the tone down a little bit, bring it down a little bit. Unfortunately, that's not the case in here. Um, I, I, Lester, I got in this race early on in 2020 for the 2020 race. I wasn't going to run again because I lost my son. I didn't feel it. And uh, until I watched what happened in Charlottesville, Virginia. Those folks coming out of the woods with torches, carrying swastikas, singing the same Nazi bile that was accompanied by this Ku Klux Klan, and a young woman was killed. And, uh, and uh, it was a bystander. And uh, the president, then president was asked, what do you think? He said, there are very fine people on both sides. Not fine people on both sides. Very fine. So here it is, man. So these guys have no merit to discuss or nothing to add, tell anyone about what great thing they built. They built, <laughs> I don't need to tell you, man. Go buy a loaf of bread and you'll figure it out. But it's it's interesting. Lester asked him a question. He turned it right back. You know, here we are talking about January 6th. Now we're talking about Charlottesville. Uh, good gracious. Good for Joe Biden because he was able to come out and listen to shit. So anyway, here's the next little bit. This These are things. I'm just telling you my thoughts on this whole deal is that this guy is such a turd bath. Uh, that's a turd. That's a turd in a bowl. Growing around in circles, okay. Uh, not only is he in full blown dementia right now, but have you ever noticed he has to hold his hands up like this 
always. Well, let's talk about the conversation this has started, and it's really about language, what we say out loud and the consequences of those. You called your opponent an existential threat uh, on a call a week ago. You said it's time to put Trump in the bullseye. Yeah, time to put Trump in the bullseye. Man, what kind of shit is that? He's an existential threat. What is an existential threat to our democracy? And I know the guys are going to say, no, KB32, we're a republic. Yes, you're right. But what I'm talking about, what they're talking about now. What is an existential threat to our democracy? Would you say that it's a guy that's telling everybody he's going to bring back the economy, make everything good, make America great again? By the way, what is wrong with that? Other than they've said, you know, MAGA, this, MAGA, that. Well, you tell people that people are bad enough enough, and what's going to end up happening is you're going to end up with somebody with a damn civil war. So anyway, uh, let's just real quickly, I want to show you something else. This is an interesting little part of section that I found. I forgot to put it over here where I needed it to. All right, let's just go back and listen to the little thing Maxine Water says. Wow. What a moving evening this is. I am sitting here listening, watching, absorbing, thinking about Ali, even though I never met him. And with this kind of inspiration, I will go and take Trump out tonight. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. She's going to take Trump out tonight. You know, here's the whole thing. Was she going to take him out to dinner or take him out? This is the motive. This is the problem we have with these individuals is they've created such a hostile environment towards Donald Trump. They're trying to take him out any way possible they can. Well, they talk somebody into doing this. And unfortunately, with the uh, the uh, malicious, the uh, failure of the Secret Service to cover that rooftop, which, yeah, I don't know, man. In any case, the guy had a bullet go through that past his right ear. Now, I'm going to tell you something. That shit right there will change your life. All right, so let's go ahead and take a look at this next session. And you know what? When somebody doesn't know what they're going to say, I do it all the time. The truth of the matter is, look, there are so many words that he impacts and goes through. And I think uh, Obama started his stuff with, look, look, look. It was so, it was so incredible. So let's listen to this next section. Here we go. The truth of the matter was, what I guess I was talking about at the time was, there was very little focus on Trump's uh, agenda. Yeah, the term is bullseye. And, and here we are, unless we're sitting here saying, hey, listen, let's, let's not worry about a Trump during this conversation. Let's talk about you. But they don't have anything to run on. There are no merits. This guy has nothing to do except for... Express the hate. Express for hate for people who make money. Express hate for corporations. It's us versus them. If you want to become a tyrant, we'll look it up. It's on Netflix. It's absolutely incredible. This guy right here covers every one of the bases of how to be a tyrant. Existential threat to democracy. So let's listen to this next section. The truth of the matter was, what I guess I was talking about at the time was, there was very little focus on Trump's agenda. Yeah, the term is bullseye. It was, a, it was a mistake to use the word. I didn't, I didn't say crosshairs. I meant bullseye. I meant focus on him. Focus on what he's doing. Focus on, on, his, on his policies. Focus on the number of lies he told in the debate. Focus. I mean, there's, there's a whole range of things. That, look, I'm not the guy that said, I want to be a dictator on day one. I'm not the guy that refused to accept the outcome of the election. I'm not the guy who said that one accept the outcome of this election automatically. You can't only love your country when you win. And here we go again. It's it's not about what I said, not the bullseye, but it's focus on the lies during the debate. It just it it, about, it it blows me away. And as a matter of fact, you know what? I should have gone through here and just picked out the best ones. I will put the link down below if you want to watch the video. It's about thirty minutes long. Lester Holt did a great job, he, but he pressured him to tell what his plan was. He doesn't have a plan, ladies and gentlemen. His whole thing is, is he built the world's greatest economy. He took it over and, and, and built all these jobs and everything else. And everybody loves him. The police love him. Any law enforcement agencies out there, how about tell me how much you love Biden? If you got some Border Patrol guys out there, DHS, uh, FPS, tell me how much you love Biden. Absolutely disgust me. But in any case, last night I watched Donald Trump walk into the RNC and I was uh, touched. Let's just say that. That guy has got a lot going on. I think there's a lot of change in heart. I can't, I can't wait to see what his speech entails. 
because in contrast with these jackasses, the existential threat, existential threat to democracy is right there. If you guys want to see more of this, let me know. Uh, we got a really cool stuff. Uh, two rifles back there. We're going to be jumping on. It's going to be interesting to see what we're doing. I'm going to be shooting next week. And uh, we'll see how accurate that X2 barrel is. KB32, if you like the video, please give it a thumbs up. Subscribe if you haven't done so. Support red, white, and blue. God bless America. God bless his men, women in uniform 24 7 for our freedom. Freedom is not free. And in the great wisdom of the real Cobra burnout, boom. I always give that guy credit. He is awesome. Y'all be good. See ya.